Hello again, everyone. It is Vince Schutte here for Shooter Multimedia, coming to you today from the Hill Aerospace Museum, just outside the Hill Air Force Base, somewhere in the environs of Ogden, Utah. Do I really need more of an introduction than that? Do you want to check it out with me? Obviously. Obviously you do. Let's go. C-124 Globemaster II. Can we zoom back a little bit? That is big plane. It's, it's a big one. Call this the blue canoe. That person has a sense of humor. Well, they, they know it's, it's providing the shade. That was always the one thing that just totally amazed me is that people could even do this. Like, that's not a lot of space. A lot of guns, not a lot of space. And you're just completely exposed to think any round comes through there. Just unbelievable courage. Unbelievable courage. I remember growing up, the B-17G was just one of those planes it just totally captured my imagination. It seems so just unapproachable and vulnerable. And yet, really, it took a tremendous amount of courage to mount up in this baby. It was facing really long odds. And they did really well. Such courage. Man. The odds got a little bit better though. Once this baby started flying with them. Man, once again. The P51D. It's fitting that they're side by side. Just an epic. Epic stuff. Wow, an actual, you know, well this is the American version of the V1 buzz bomb. I didn't know it was that small. I always picture it like a much bigger thing, I and mean, not that that's small. It's a big, you know, compared to a P-51. But... You never get a sense of scale. You know, when you're watching these things on, you know, the History Channel. 
At least I did. Maybe you did. I didn't. I didn't. I'm just. I'm a little bit overwhelmed right now. That's like wow. I never thought I'd see one of these. And again, it has the American markings. This is we, we copied it after the war from blueprints just to learn how they did some of these things. It says over here, the JB2 was a duplicate of the V1 with minor modifications. Testing of the U.S. version began in 1944. 1944 they were doing, you had, had these. After the Air Technical Service Committee finished the blueprints of the V1, with results of the test promising, preparations were made to launch it against Japan, which include the formation of a B-17 unit from which the bombs would be launched. We're going to air launch them. Okay, no actual strikes, however, were made from this unit. And, of course, you know, the whole atom bomb thing kind of made it all a little bit moot. Yeah, there's that. Holy trainer, that's interesting. Pilot training. Okay, please sit in this chair and let's see if you'll barf. They have a P-40, wow. P-40 and Warhawk. That's another one of those. It's just a fabled kind of plane here. Now, this is your Flying Tigers, folks. This is the, you know, the one they use. Maybe not the end. I'm not sure if they ever got the end, but... I have to go back and read that as my co-pilot again. They have it mocked up like it was being built up on the home front. B 24 D Liberator. This is a marvelous place just to be, folks. Look at this. So there's the turret, intact. And I guess this is, I'm not sure what the story is, but this looks like this might have been a rough day, folks. I mean, just as one as they found it, was it damaged this way in the war? I don't know. And it just kind of found that way yet for years in the black guy. Should be a story. Dude, somewhere here. seeing what about that part. Hey, it's just one that they have. A thunderbolt. It's almost too, you know, we only have a little time here, but almost too much to take in. P38 recovery. Oh, I remember reading about this. I'm seeing something about this where they, they got these, they'd been underwater for ages. Displayed are the original propeller and 50 cal machine gun recovered from the Alaska crash. So they, they completely restored the thing. What kind of effort went into getting this back? The Allison engine. Man, just unbelievable. Rocky P-38 daylight. Now 
Uh, is that a shooting star? Am I... The L17 Navian. Ta da! I'll take a shot of this in a minute. I'm thinking that's a shooting star, but I could be wrong. I'll have to see if we can identify that. That is big beefy fighter. It's big and it's beefy. There's there's some beefiness. Yeah. Day 35, the day 31. I don't see a sign for it. You're just supposed to know. It's almost certain it's a P-80 shooting star, but I'm not, not 100% sure. Thunder jet. I mean, I know it looks cool in video games, but can you imagine trying to line something up at like hundreds of miles an hour and you have to hit it with the bullets? It's just unbelievable. Bell Sue. Anyone having any mash flashbacks here? I think it's. That, if it wasn't a Sue, then it was something darn similar. And here we have it. The Saber. That looks like you're playing. Ah! The Jolly Roger. Yeah, <laughs> six fifties. Yeah. Imagine what it sounded like when you pulled the trigger. <laughs> and you had to hit stuff. I lined it right up. I mean, once you clip somebody with it, it's awesome. Yeah, it's really yeah, it's beautiful. The painting on these is beautiful. Oh, it really is. Zoom in on Seven kills? Yeah, that's what it implies. An A26 Invader, wow. Night Fighter, right? I think it was a Night Fighter. Yeah. Yeah, search light in the nose. I don't remember if these had, I think these may have had radar, like a, a radar at some point on them. Yeah. Imagine you're just flying through night and all of a sudden there's big headlight hits you. That's. That's got to be a little unnerving. And like with the amount of bombs on it, I guess if you're just on the ground and you get hit with a big headlight, the things are not going on. So look at cows. Yeah, that's, you look at the nose. When you really just want to make sure the message is, is sent, you know what I'm saying? And then they got them in the wings and they've got the I mean, it's just bristling. The Grim Reapers, that's well well named. 
wonder if that's the actual the actual signs from Nash. Is that the actual thing here? So here we are up close with an F-80 shooting star, or P-80 as they were originally called. It's got the same, I don't know. This one, that one up there looks a little bit longer. And it has a, that TR designation might mean training. So that might have been an extended training version of it. It has the same, that, that, that intake is kind of definitive. This is before the, you know, before the Sabre. This was, you know, the first, one of the first real uh, fighter jets we had. Oh, it was renamed for the aircraft designation P for pursuit change to F for fighter. There you go. First plane to exceed 500 miles an hour in level flight. And based on what's over here, uh, I'm, I'm starting to guess what might be up here. Let's back up a little bit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at. <coughs> oh, B25. Now that's related. I, I thought it was a little bit small to be the one that dropped the atom bomb. But. It's not small in the slightest. B-25. Again, another plane that is not want for bullets. I wonder if that has a red light in the front. I wonder if that's just a, an indicator it wasn't a spotlight in the other one. Yeah, probably. This is the one that they actually took off. I think this is this one they took off from the carriers and, and bombed Tokyo with it. That yeah, right here? That right here. Little, oh, there you go. Yeah, the dual yeah. right. I look behind myself and you can see, yeah. Can you imagine trying to get this off a carrier? There's <laughs> foam But they have to save the Yes. To maintain safety. So here we have Tri the Trinity bomb replica. The gadget, as they called it. Oh, see, I was right. The gadget. It's so funny. It's, it's these big, bulbous things. And then they start to get a little bit more and a little bit more streamlined. And you'd think this would be the more powerful one. No, no. <coughs> One point five kiloton on this one. So this one, these were these are older ones. They would have been smaller. But I mean, you look, I've seen when I've gone to have gone to Vegas. I've seen the, the, the yeah, you know, the big ones, and they're, they're like not much bigger than that. B you know, sixty one stuff like that. I think it was called. Thankfully, it says the word inert, so we, we can we can be relaxed. So that's. They all say inert. No, no I, I, I had to Google it. It just, you know, because you're talking 20 kilotons or so, as I recall. Does it say? Um, something along those lines. Up to 400 kilotons. Just, just, just from did that yeah. This is called the evolution of the ballistic missile. From here, and you can see through the windows some more planes, and then into the darkness here. And as everything resolves, it's like, wow. So here we go. Even more stuff. You. That plane right there. I, I'm guessing he has it. I mean, it's small, but I mean, it looks. It might have been used. I see like, the, the, the seal on it. The seal's on there. I mean, it might have been something they used for short distances or something like that, as opposed to 747. Air Force One's only a designation. Don't, don't, don't touch aircraft. Don't leave your kids unattended. 
take pictures and tag us and explore and have fun. Okay. So they're cool. They're cool with all this. That's good. It's a F100. So here they got some centuries. The bullets. <laughs> the super saber. It's just wild. Wow, it's a voodoo. The one oh one B voodoo. I think it'd be 1,200 miles an hour. The Delta Dagger, always, that's another one that always held my imagination as a kid. Because, I mean, it just looks so space fighter, you know? I mean, it just... First all-weather supersonic jet interceptor. I mean, when you look at this and think, well, this is from back in the early 60s. And this is beautiful, okay? But, but like, I'm going to have, like, kind of an emotional moment here. Oh, my goodness. They have a starfighter. Tip of the spear. I have chills. I'm, ha I'm having chills over the starfighter. We never mind when we get to the blackbird. Oh, you call it the blackbird back there. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the missile with a man in it. We'll hustle. You said you better check yourself for C-130. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the... Okay, so this one will close in 30? 30. Okay, thank you. So we can actually, yeah, yeah, this, uh, that's what he was telling us. Oh, wow. But just don't go, oh, okay. Yeah. And be careful of what you're setting your footing. Yeah, Jerry, me too. Wow. I'll get right out. Uh, Now they flew me from Korea <laughs> to the Philippines to catch up with the fleet. Did they really? Yeah, got a oh. C-130. What was that like? Loud. <laughs> Loud. I can believe it. One of the tires you need pumped up. Uh, well, you need pumped up tires. Yeah. <coughs> this one doesn't have any on. So we were held up on takeoff. Oh, oh my. Wow, and you're going from Korea to the Philippines? Yeah. Wow. And there's the outside. Ooh. Now that's a big spider. Big spider. Holy cow. It's like we're running out of time, so it starts to become a panic of what can you not miss. It's only open for a little while longer. Sky Raider. Okay, not only do they have a, a Blackbird, they have an SR 71C, it's the trainer. Because as you can imagine, flying something like this, this is the trainer. Take a little bit of training. What like, good look at this engine.
You gotta have to, it's just. Is there a helicopter? Yeah. Oh, here's the start cart you were talking about, Jer. Start cart, yeah. Two 425 cubic inch Buick Wildcat engines. There you go, Jerry. Yeah. That's what it took just to start it. Yeah. Just to start oh, one, it's, and then you have to take it over to the other side. Take two more. Oh, that's a they had to only partially fuel it on the ground, and then once it got in the air, they would refuel it. And when it finally got up to temperature, then it would stop leaking fuel. And just to get to see the kind of the back end, we have to kind of get around and then get right next to this Nighthawk, I'm the first stealth fighter. And you have to come over by the, this is an amazing plane of itself. Just to get an angle of the size of the darn Blackbird. It's just, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get across to you at all. The presence of, of these planes. It just, you can't. I can't do this justice. Wow. It's just wow. And then you have the Nighthawk. I mean, we only have like a little bit of time left here, so we gotta start hustling. But it's definitely better to come when the place is not ready to close. And a Predator drone, which is bigger than I thought. I knew they were pretty big. Now, what's this? That target drone? Fire bee drone. Yeah, target drone. This is important. And a decoy. And okay, so here we have the quail decoy. There's a little, little shift here. Little, Little chip kind of make this zoom this out a little bit more. Not to ape on uh, Tyler Hoover, but oh, that was my Tyler Hoover impression. <laughs> the A10, man. It's it's a player plane built around a gun. I mean, it's okay. I still think that is, that's, that's one round. The Cow 8 Avenger. And then like a bunch of Falcons. F-16. I had a model, this exact color, the exact paint job when I was a kid. It's not a call I botched the paint job, but... as a kid Oh yeah, well, we all were. We're all into... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Hill Air Force Base. Paint job on it. F-16s. Didn't they come out with the F-22? Well, yeah, I don't think they have a 22 here yet. But I mean, do they have the original in existence? Oh, yeah, well, that's, that's like the... Five you have, years or something, maybe? Oh, yeah, you got it. No, just, you got, no, it's been around about 20 years now, but... Oh, really? Oh, yeah, but, I mean, it's still, like, an unbelievable... Oh, when did this come out? Oh, yeah. take a look. Way, way, way uh, further back than you'd think. That's something. Look, all these are, you know, there's like 70s, yeah. early 80s kind of stuff. It's... Oh, and then, you got, how can, you know, the venerable. Still to you, 70, yeah, 79, I'm saying. Oh, my gosh. Same with the 15. I mean, it's, you know, 
This was this was. Is there a newer one besides the 22 now? Yeah. 35. Oh, That's what you've been watching lately. Over there. But I mean, really, when you when you talk about the 16 and the 15, they have to go down as some of the most important aircraft, the most successful over the longest careers of anything, really. They just, you, you, you don't have words. You just, you can't have words. If you have words, they're not adequate. Look at that, look just, I mean that, I keep coming back to that Blackbird and it's just, you, you can't. Which one? Oh, the Blackbird is just mind blowing. Oh. It's what? a secret for years. Ooh, an ACLM. Huh? Blackbird, what year? 60s. 60s oh yeah they kept it secret for years years and years yeah that's that's where you all your people thinking there's ufos they see this thing flying across at mach 3 and they're like um that ain't from this world and like oh no it is <laughs> tanks the tanks leak until it heats up agm ae6 air launch cruise missile that's okay. Yeah, the the, fu the the fuel's not very volatile. Wow. It's really weird. Now, is this what this is one of those do is this what I think it is kind of things? Yeah. It's smaller than I thought it would be. This one is smaller than I thought it would be. The F111 With the swing wings, same as the F-14. I think, I think the Australians still use these. Lovely thing, huge, but not as big as I thought. Oh, and here, how can you, how can you have a museum without this? Again, oh, those from my childhood, like just so. So important, the Phantom, Phantom 2. I don't even know if I can get a wide shot on this one. But let us not miss the elephant in the room, as it were. <laughs> the Black Hawk. This is something else. This is. Something else. This is. We're going to take a whole walk around here because this is And thanks to Michael Bay, I'm afraid it's going to like transform and eat me. <laughs> Look at that. Now we're gonna look at we're gonna look in the black hawk and then we'll look in what's look how snuggled up these have these two helicopters. This is not a black hawk. It's a Korsky Pavlo 4 Super Jolly, so that's not what I thought it was. Or is that this one? Am I messed up? It's a house, it's a big thing. I was afraid this was a black hawk. Is that not a black hawk? It's a super jolly. Oh, no. a su super jolly? This is way bigger than a black hawk. Super jolly. See, I'm ignorant of my helicopters. I must apologize. Yeah. No. It, it's a, hawks are what land at depot all the time. They're mm, black hawks. Okay. I don't know if you ever see them come in and land. I do, them. but I've never been up next to one. Yeah. Super jolly. It's a little bit big. They're chasing us. The Jolly Green Giant. So this is the, the larger version of this. 
The Super Jolly is the larger version of the Jolly Green Giant. Oh, okay. Big, big helicopters. Well, that must be an exciting thing, designing that. Oh, yeah. You're talking about design. Oh, the, the complication to it. Exhibit under development. Oh my goodness. Exhibit under development. Well, this is going to be something to come back and see, I guess, if it's under development. Guys, Minuteman. Minuteman 1. I'm not sure I should be seeing any of this. Obviously, we have better things now, but wow. Whew. And what am I looking at here? Okay, this is a... Well, here is a, uh, a 106. I mean, we kind of skipped, we kind of went, went past all this stuff in a rush to make sure that we got to the, the Black Hawk, but the Delta Dart was... A, a, uh, development of the F-102, so that's why it has a similar kind of look to it. The Pitot Tube. I will let you read that for your homework. And I will take a picture of it so it's easier to read for me. Because <laughs> we are running low on time. Here is an F-105 Thunder Chief, a.k.a. the Thud, because early on they had some, some issues with them, but so this is a uh, call. Well, this one, this is a wild weasel, weasel variant. I mean, this is fly into the mouth of the, of the, of the anti-air defense systems and jam them. Even the nose rat looks a little psychotic on this one, doesn't it? <laughs> He's just screaming at us. And here's a, that's the wild weasel variant. They have another one. They must have, there must have been a strong link to Hill with the, with the, with the thud. It's a thunder chief. Thunder thud. Thunder what? chief, the thunder chief. Yeah. That's what's out by the PX. Yeah, I thought there is one out by the PX. Yeah. I have a selfie with that one. I like this one. Look at this. Looks like death. Oh, yeah. Is that enough for us? I have to look. Let's take a look because we're running out of time. Running out of time. The F 105. And lots of bombs. Lots of bombs and missiles and things. There's, a, again, a lot to see here. So we're back around here. This is another angle on the Sky Raider. The 104. Where am I? What am I missing here? This one. And this is adjacent. This museum is adjacent to Hill Air Force Base, so you get to hear a lot of modern stuff flying around. Yeah, F5! The Tiger 2. That's a flight in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought I saw something similar flying over the other day. I don't know. I, I'm not saying it wasn't a ghost. Yeah, this, I believe, this is the one they use as the adversary, as the Russian planes in Top Gun. That's what they were using because nobody knew anything about jets. So it's like, no one's like, hey, that's it. why would the Russians be using an F5? No, it's just a black plane. Don't worry about it. They were supposed to use MiGs. I don't think they had MiGs. So I think they used F5s, but I could be wrong. I could, we can look that up, I guess. The Morris American Bronco.
I think that was a, a reconnaissance plane. Turboprop light attack aircraft. So if you could imagine that this is performing similar kind of stuff. Oh yeah, we got the missile underneath and guns. This is what this is the kind of thing you would use as, as opposed to an A-10. A little more exposed, I think. Still, it must have been deadly back in the 60s. Oh. Don't want to leave, but they're going to throw me out soon. Now, final pass through as we work our way out. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this tour as much as I have, and I have not shown you everything. I can't show you everything. It's just not a thing that I can do, but I am very suitably impressed. This is very cool. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Shooter for Shooter Multimedia. Have a great day, everybody. Is that a Brewster? We're going back to the car so I can't look, but I think it might be. I'm not sure.